Hey guys, welcome back to Occultist Anonymous. Um, we are now sponsored by Roll20, and that's super cool. Um, yeah, and seriously guys, if and I said it last episode, I'll probably say it for the next couple episodes. If you're wanting to play a game, and you're like, ah, oh, there's nobody near me who wants to play Chronicles of Darkness, or World of Darkness, or anything niche, get on Roll20. Guarantee you will find some people. Might have to work out scheduling and stuff like that, but there are always people looking to play Roll20, great place to do it. Anyways, um, but it is also brought to you by viewers like you. Uh, thank you very much to our patrons uh, who support us financially and give us money so we can buy equipment and updates and do cool little stuff like that. Um, we, we greatly it greatly appreciate your support. Uh, very specifically, oh, you know, we're going we're gonna to do this different. Thomas, Schmitty, Ryan, Perry, Noba, Michael, Cat. Excuse me, Cat Feathers. Let's give the full name. James, Giovanni, Danny, Claire, and uh, Brandon. Thank you guys so much for your support. backwards that time. Yeah, backwards that time. I realized, you know, I can just start sorting these things in just different ways and read them that way. Anyways, thank you much for your support. Uh, we appreciate it. Sorry, do I seem a little hyper? I'm a little hyper because holy crap, I want to get back into this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, everybody else, thank you for hanging out, enjoying the show, watching it with us. We're just a bunch of nerds and we would love you to come join us in Discord and hang out and chat with us. Um, I think I met mentioned it in the outro, like, two episodes ago, whatever. Uh, we now even have a channel literally dedicated to what happened in your game because we're a bunch of nerds and we like sharing our game and we want to see what your what's happening in your game. No promise that Come we give us read. good ideas to give Drew a headache. Hmm. Also, thank you for giving this me ideas of a way to torture my players. <laughs> or giant that. spider people. Nope. Mm. VW spider, nope. I believe, what was it? Crazed abyssal table that wants to turn people into wood? We had one of nope. those. I can't remember who that was. Titan? TMTM. Yeah. Uh, TM. yeah. Original content. Do not steal. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to jump back into uh, into the game. Uh, so when, when we last left off, there was some stuff about Beck and Mammon. Who cares about that? Craig had, uh, excuse me, Weird had wandered off. <laughs> yeah. Weird had wandered off into New York. Songbird um, chatted with Hadromiel and cast a spell in a church. And Atratus had had a chit chat with uh, Gabe and had literally just been talking about how good her dog is being. Not that you hear any of this and I'm going to cut it in the, in the final video. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're going to pick up um, actually with our, our big drama right now uh, as uh, Mammon is escorted into Hisa's um, office, which I think is actually the first time that Mammon has actually been in his office previously he's always been at Tratus. Um, and so yes, going from itty bitty little cubicle of Ocean's office to a rather spacious, huge desk, sitting area, like tons of room. Um Doctor Who fans, yes, it is bigger on the inside. Um and uh, you know, he's a basically it's motions smaller forward. on the outside. Yeah, smaller on the outside. Yeah, sure. Uh, what I don't get is why Oceans hasn't gotten him to come her office. Like, and that is a question to ask. Uh, why she's still in a closet? He's got all this shit. <laughs> uh, she doesn't want to spend the XP on upping her space game, right? Uh, and uh, basically, he's a kind of uh, motions uh, mammon over to uh, this kind of empty space. So says, "Go ahead and uh, stand there," and he goes to um, a shelf and pulls out um, what looks like a big like sack of flour and starts just making out a circle in some kind of pattern. It's very quick and hectic. You definitely get the sense that he's he's rushing this um, and basically says, uh, you can stand, kneel, whatever, just get comfortable. You might be standing there for a minute um, and says, I'm going to delve into your brain and your mind and see if your memories are altered. You on board? Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. um, and so, uh, blah, 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 blah. where is he's his character sheet? <laughs> Hold please. Okay. Um, right here. Uh, and you definitely do not recognize the spell. Um, this is some like Gnosis 4, Gnosis 5, or 
mine four, mine five kind of stuff. Um, um, and starts to chant in high speech. Cool. Um, and so you, Mammon, basically suddenly like, and you're back in kind of this void for a second by yourself. And then mm -hmm. suddenly Hiza is there standing next to you and he puts his hand on your shoulder and is like, okay, we're in here. Um, the, the, these are your memories, at least as much as you can remember. Take me, take me back there. Take me, take me to that memory. Okay. So that is what sure. I do. I, I take him to the bank. Right. And so walk me through Mammon's memory of the event. Okay. In including the awakening? Uh, at, show me what you... Uh, no, excuse me. Back to the original memory. He, back to the thing that was altered. So yeah, okay. back to your awakening. What, what Mammon remembers right. of it. So um, the bank heist is occurring... And um, during the the heist, um, it's a you know very stressful, hectic uh, area. Um, we have a uh, another masked heister who is attempting to control uh, two people within the bank that are having an issue. At the time, uh, Mammon is not aware of what the issue is, although he will later find out that the elderly gentleman was literally having a heart attack and was trying to get his his pills, his heart pills. Um, while the other heister just saw a guy who was reaching, suddenly frantically reaching into his jacket pocket, right? Um, and uh, during that time, while Mammon is trying to, to calm the situation, uh, you know, it's almost like his, his eyes are opened even wider. He sees everything. He sees the silver lines of connection between people, between ideas, between objects. Um, and he sees a, a flaming figure, um, that looks, the face looks like Beck, um, who is holding out a book for him to sign. And, taking it all in he raises the only thing he has in his hand which is his gun and he shoots the book and when he shoots the book to sign it everything fades away and the heister who was the new guy that was invited to come with them as he remembers um is now dead he when he shot the book he shot the new guy and realizing shit was going downhill fast and needing to come to grips with with what he's just experienced, which, of course, he's never experienced anything like that before. So believing himself to potentially having been, you know, thinking he just went mad, he he took off and um, knew he needed to lie low for a little bit. So he flew to New York um, to kind of let the heat die down with the intent of bringing uh back sure. with him at a, at a later time and so he's a, he's just standing there watching and it's just like before where you're you know mammon is standing there watching this all playing out and he's just you know watching and looking and he's like so this is this is this is what you remember and as the memory just kind of shifts to a sudden stop yes okay and so and he kind of walks over and he's looking at everything he's like you ever notice that this body's not right. How and, so? And and you know he's a kind of you know kneels down next to at this point the heister that may have been shot accidentally and says, "Look," and just like the mask is just kind of askew and it's like there's uh distorted. It's like bad video game graphics where like the model is all twisted up, like the head is cocked oddly and stuff. And he's like. I mean, that's not right. That's not how a body lays. I mean, we can talk to oceans, but your head doesn't twist around like that, does it? And then and then kind of stands up and walks the thing backwards 
and just everything shifts, lurching, kind of sickening feeling. It's all, and then you're standing there in front of, you know, this, you know, blazing Beck. And Stephanie kind of motions and goes, I mean, have you ever seen a demon look like an angel? Have you ever summoned a demon? Because they're never this pretty. Well, no, but I've also never summoned a demon, so I don't really have a frame of reference to to compare. That's some, like, Obrimos shit, man. Like, this, there's something going on, but this isn't, this isn't what they showed you. No, that is not what they showed me. And so he just goes, uh, okay, well, um, it, walk with me here and just, you know, the whole world fades and you feel your life flashing by and he kind of, you know, <laughs> pull, pulls a weird and kind of, you know, skims, skims back and forth and goes, ah, here we are. And now you are in this like inception level Mammon and he's are staring down, looking at Mammon, staring at Mammon. At these layers of memory um and he motions and he says and so this is what they showed you shooting a woman in their in their version of it yeah and he kind of well that's and he kind of takes a small step away from you he says the body is right mammon Well, I don't, I don't know what that means. What do, you, what do you mean the body's right? I mean, look, and you know, the the whole vision just kind of comes up towards Mammon, and he's in. You guys are like standing now, like small figures next to this massive, you know, version of the the female heister, and you know, it's like the body lays normally, like head tilt. And all, uh, but as he's, you know, as you're down there looking and he, he says, looking very uncomfortable as all of a sudden he's realizing, oh, maybe something else is up. He kind of looks up and they're um, over, not the mammon who has just shot the gun, but the mammon watching this memory. Sorry if I lose anybody here. <laughs> um, and... He kind of points and he says, is that Cynthia? And they're floating kind of like ghastly, ghostly is, you know, a spectral form of Cynthia floating over the middle <laughs> mammon <laughs> and is like fingers are in Mammon's own head sunk in. Because that doesn't look right either. I'm not a doctor, but I'm inclined to agree with you. I mean, this is all fucked up. So what is, but that, what is that? That means that she changed it, right? She changed my memory. You said her fingers are in my head. <laughs> she, I mean, she changed something. But, like, that's, it's, it's back, right? But, okay, okay, let, 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 let's step back. Um, because where, 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 did, where, did, where did our blazing angel go? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Where, where did it go? Because it's not in this version. And so, you know, everything shifts again. Um, and there, you know, is all the, you know, Mammon seeing all the connections and then they're big, big blazing, twisting, gnarling red one. And he goes, so there's that, which, I mean, that's obvious. Did Beck even know this guy? Did, did your heister friend know this guy? Because this is like, this is some like age old grudge shit. Well, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. It 
I, I, it doesn't make, no, the events don't line up. That's not who Beck is. I mean, she can be a little wild, right? But I don't, I've never seen her just in, in cold blood shoot somebody. That's not, that's not how we operate. That's not good business. Did, did you guys heist a lot? I mean, she didn't usually go on the on the bank jobs. She was usually more of like, uh, you know, scams and and fraud. But so, but still, I mean, that's the super out of character. So she could have been sketchy and uncomfortable. Maybe, but that still that still doesn't jive. So my question is. Why would I invite her on a heist and then suddenly decide to shoot her? Like, uh, I'm going to I'm going to level with you. Right. I'm I'm a bad guy. I'm not a good person. We're all okay? good. Sure. Yeah. But we you know, we've always operated under not killing civilians. That's just that's not this bad business. Sure. I right? see. Heat. And. Beck and I grew up together. I mean, we went to the same elementary school. We've been together literally our whole lives. Even if Beck was going to shoot this guy in cold blood, she and I would have some very strong words after, but I would not shoot her, especially not in the middle of a job because everybody knows we're together. It's going to immediately implicate me in the robbery. So the whole event playing out that way doesn't make sense from a logical standpoint, if, which is why I, I have to believe that something's been altered, that this doesn't make sense as is presented to me. Sure, sure. OK, um, well. And he kind of looks uncomfortable. He's like, OK, let's 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 leave the memory for now, because you you spoke with Beck. Right. I spoke with okay. her on the phone. I scried on her. OK, let's let, let's go back there. When, when was that? Can can you can you take us back there? Um, yeah, yeah, I can take us back there. So I, I take him to the memory of when I sent her the text and then uh, scried on her, scried on her, then sent her the text and then the next day talked to her on the phone. Right. And so, yeah, go there to the scrying. And as you're looking at it, like you, you see this, the, you, you watch the casting of the spell, super familiar, you scried a billion things and it cuts to just this black image. And he says, what do you, what do you see here, Mammon? Nothing. And that's, the problem, because I definitely scried on her. I saw her. I saw her waiting tables, which is odd because she's never done a, a legit day's work in her life. But we've I've also always been there. So so, so she'd knows? only she, she'd wait tables only if you were gone. Is the only thing I mean, based on on how much I know her. I, yeah, I can't imagine her. I can't imagine her doing legit work. So if she has access to somebody who, who can who can run a job with her. So so me leaving must have been the catalyst to be like, OK, well, I got to I got to find it gainful employment. OK, OK. It's kind of. All right. Well, well, I mean, you talked to her, right? So, yeah, I spoke to her on the phone. OK, let's let, let's go there. And uh, you're there in your apartment talking. There's no other half of the conversation. How the fuck is. Listen, I, I don't I don't know you especially well, but I think your magic is fucked up because you're only getting my half of the conversation, not her half of the conversation, which clearly happened because I'm not fucking crazy. No, I no. definitely talked to her on the phone. No, I booked a flight. Right, right. OK, so you booked a flight. Or did she book the flight? 
Well, I booked the flight. I it sent the confirmation to my phone. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And all of a sudden, he's just gone. And a moment later, Mammoth is standing there, the flower around him. And he's a kind of looks to, to oceans and then back to you and goes, um, it was um, inconclusive. Um, something, something's definitely weird. It's, it's really kind of odd. Um, but uh, let's, let's scry on back. She got on the plane and she had to go somewhere. Right. Even. Right. Okay. So, so let's try that. Um, you, you, you go ahead and scry on her. I, I, that way I'm not even having to borrow your connection. You just scry on her. Okay. Uh, out of character. Are you wanting me to actually roll or are we just assuming that I'm going to scry on her? Because it would be really bad for the story if, if I rolled zero. Go ahead and roll. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I'm not going to use a reach for instant. I'm going to make them stand here for four hours. It's only three. No, I'm right. just fine. Uh, reach for instant, reach for sympathetic. Mm-hmm. It's a that's a space, right? Mm-hmm. Space two. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But is that the one that you have as a root? No, I don't have scrying okay. as a root. I wish I did. Well, actually, I, I'm glad I don't because I, I never use it. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna go ahead and use shadow name and high speech. Sure. For five. Five. Right, and then just spend the one mana on sympathetic casting. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we just have one overreach, one paradox. Why do I keep doing that? It's a five. Um, so no no paradox. So yeah, go ahead and roll the eight. Yeah, fucking big. <laughs> of course it does. I called that yeah. shit. So, you know, there, there's a moment and uh, you know, nothing happens and he's a good side. Should, should, should I try? You, you know what? Let, I'm going to give it another shot. Okay. I got this. So go ahead and roll seven. It's like a lawnmower, man. You got to pull that cord a couple times sometimes. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know why I'm rolling Paradox. This is totally... Why would he not have a domain here? Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the scry appears and you see Beck like on an airplane. And he's a... Like sitting, mm-hmm. laying, yeah, sitting, stuffed in the cargo hold? Folded in half, no. Uh, like sitting in an airplane, like flying. And he's a... She's right fucking there. She's still on the plane. He's uh kind of looks over and says, "Don't see anything, my man." And Ocean's like sets a hand on your shoulder. Is like, um, I don't see anything either, man. Well, listen, something's fucking. Uh, we, we 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 agree Ab- absolutely um like are, are you do you do i mean so so what is, what is she doing like what 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 are you seeing she, she's just sitting there why the fuck is she just sitting on the plane her flight arrived at like 10 something unless she just turned right back around and went home she shouldn't be on a plane right and i mean Sounds like she had a ticket. Unless it's Mr. Graves guy fucked with her, fucked with her mind, and she's back on the plane flying home. Okay, yeah, that 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 that's definitely a possibility. This Mr. Graves is doesn't explain why you guys can't no, see no, it. No, it doesn't. Maybe he like warded her, and I'm the only one that can see it. Is that a thing? He's a. I mean, yeah, you you, you could key a ward, but I mean, you're casting the spell. So you would, um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, Mammon. Um, this, this is, this is something, as, as you said, fucky. 
go. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to go to Washington and find her. Um, yeah, yeah. That's uh, all there yeah. is to it. Uh, yeah, I, I I think that's. I mean, if nothing else, that's a good place to start a search. If if she is flying back, she should be back there. I mean, if I if I can't. So what is what is in your expert opinions? What is this? Don't worry about my feelings. I don't have any. If you're, I mean, you, you have a connection to her. You, you care about her. So if you're scrying on her, like, and if that is her that was shot and she was buried, like, you would be scrying into her coffin. Okay, but that doesn't explain why I can see her. I don't. I don't know. It's uh. And why isn't my memory of that event of me shooting her? Why do I have this al- alternate memory of the event? And what is it that you saw with the this this chick with her fingers in my head? I mean, I I I one hundred percent agree with you, Mamet. Somebody is messing with your memory. Did, did, Chris, did you have some? Yeah. Was mind magic? Wouldn't you, wouldn't he be able to like see what Mammon's literally seeing? Oh, um, that is a good question. Like, Jack, that like optical yeah. nerve input. Yeah. Um, I believe that's not quite possession. Um, the psychic protection possession. Is it just three dots? Quick and dirty. Yeah, it might be. Um, I mean, if he's got four or five dots in mind, like, I see that as being possible. Yeah. Take possession of the body. Yeah, I, I'd probably even and, less. And just from a neophyte, is the connection the same if you believe someone's alive? It's a question, isn't it? Or is it? Uh, can you the... scry on a ghost uh, without knowing they're a ghost? You could do that too. Good thing you guys aren't here. There's some buck wild theoretical yep. space magic. Um, so I'm gonna <laughs> hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop mm-hmm. Isa, and I'm gonna propose a theory. Okay. Is it possible that this Mister Graves gentleman found my connection to Beck, borrowed the thread? And gave it to, would you say her name? Oh, yeah, Cynthia. 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 Borrowed the thread from me and gave it to Cynthia. So when I scry, I'm seeing Cynthia in the, um, I'm seeing Cynthia in her. Oh, imposter. Imposter presence. Well, is, that, is that not I a mean, possibility? Yeah. If that happened, I mean, it you still doesn't have... explain why you guys can't see the scry, but there's got to be an explanation yeah. to it. But if he bore the thread, you wouldn't have it to scry. Uh, he, you, you can make a copy instead of just okay. Borrowing. But yeah, he's in odds and goes. I mean, that's that's a possibility, uh, but that doesn't explain the phone call. Where? Well, I mean, it's a cell phone. You can you can clone a SIM card. I used to do it all the yeah. time for scams. But I just heard you talking to yourself. So, what is this? Are you scrying on a dead woman, Mammon, and just seeing what you want to see? But if that was the case, I'm gonna I'm going to humor your theory. If that was the case. Then, oh, no, I don't, I don't think so, because that's not, that's not how any of this works. Magic doesn't show us just what we want to see. I, or else everybody around me would have gigantic breasts. <laughs> and that's not the case. Yeah, Oceans looks mm. very uncomfortable for a minute, but he says like, what if it's not magic, Mammon? What if this is just... So you're saying I'm crazy. 
Just say it. Say you think I'm crazy. You. The mind mage can't come up with a reason why I am having false memories and seeing things that may not potentially be there. I mean, there's some major things out there that could mess you up. Like, and if let's, you know, just just assume that you shot Beck in like let 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 let's take your original memory and what if you shot Beck on accident? Beck is there in that memory as that flaming angel and you shot well, I just figured it was her. like metaphorical. And you you shot her her book and then she fell and and you're trying to pick up the pieces. I mean you left. You left a so Okay, but then why is the version of the memory that they showed me different? Are they trying to manipulate you? Well, I'm sure they were, which is what brought me here. How quickly did you come here? I I waited about five minutes so that they wouldn't be following me. I cast outward inward eye uh, instantly. I didn't make it a ritual. To make sure I wasn't being tailed out. Okay. This guy, Mr. Graves, is what he called himself. He left a business card on my coffee table. Mm -hmm. I obviously was not going to leave that shit in my apartment. Okay. I picked it up, did a quick look-see to make sure that there was nothing else like stuffed under a sofa cushion or whatever. Mm -hmm. Came here, chucked it out my car window about halfway here. So he wouldn't have a connection to inside this building. Okay. Okay. And they didn't follow you. And, and that's it. I didn't see anybody following me. And nobody upstairs has reported anything weird. I think maybe. By the by, if you have never <laughs> driven with outward inward eye, it's fucking wild. You should give it a shot. <laughs> um, and and uh, Oceans kind of looks at Heason and says, so maybe they're not after the Athenaeum? Why would they be after me? I, I literally have been doing this for six months. I mean, I'm I'm not an acanthus. I can't see forward. I don't know. I mean, and they they cheat. Like if it if Mr. Graves is a seer and he's got the Exarchs giving them clues or direction. I mean, you could be important to them, which means that you need to stay away from them. Otherwise, they're just going to manipulate you. Well, I mean, that's obvious. That's what you guys have always told me right. since I came here. Mammon, yeah. But I find it very concerning um, that, you know, we, we have evidence of false memories uh, or, or at least perceived evidence of false memories, if I'm humoring you. Um, but you yourself have seen the Cynthia chick's fingers in my head during that moment. Um, in in their version of the telling of the bank scenario, uh, and, and and there seems to be no concern, no concern over it. It's like, oh, it's just a, it's just a fucking Wednesday. Oh, of course that happens every Wednesday. The Sears dive into bank robbers' minds. Of course. Well, no, we're not. So my question becomes, what the fuck do I do from here? Where do I go? Do I just go back about my life pretending like everything is fine and that nobody's trying to fuck with me? No, no, no. I mean, we're we're here. We're we're we're, we're on it. We'll we'll look into this. We'll call up some other Mastigos. Uh, we'll, we'll reach out to the rest of the caucus and, and see if we can figure out what people are. I mean, I guarantee some people are going to want to come study you and see like what's going on like this is very weird so thank you, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um there's been a lot of yeah those. <laughs> um so i feel like you know stay stay grounded don't do anything reckless steer clear of them and and i mean uh we can we, we have a we have a safe house here in the athenaeum and and we can give you a, a comfortable bed and a place to stay. 
and and we can steer you clear, steer steer the seers away. Uh, we'll see if somebody can find this Mr. Graves. Well, I mean, he left a pretty lasting impression on me. Uh, could you not pull a thread from me to him from me? I mean, it might be a weak connection, but it's a start. Yeah, yeah, let's let's try that. Um, I'm trying to remember here. I got to scroll back up. That was the face of a DM who wasn't expecting. No, that. actually, it was. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he casts correspondence on you, and you know, looks for connections. And I mean, there's there's no connection to. I don't see a Mr. Graves dangling off of you. What the okay. fuck is going on? <laughs> like, well, right. I mean, and, 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 and I mean, come on, Mammon, you know, it's it's super easy to just veil sympathy and just to keep from forming connections, like, especially if he's causing yeah. you, you all trouble. I mean, he called a meeting for all of us, and of course we went, because why would we not want to go meet with the seer? Of course that's a good idea. So we all went. Just, just but exact I'm the only words. One. It was running through words head, <laughs> and everyone's saying, yeah, let's go meet him. Yeah. Everything turned out fine for Sombra. It's yep. fine. But, uh, I mean, to my knowledge, I'm the only person that he's directly fucking with. Sure. I mean, maybe. So, to answer your question... No, I think it's just me. For now. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, in in that case, I, I think you should probably hang out here. We'll uh, we can we can call Atratus. We can let her know that you'll you'll be here, and we can kind of keep you under lock and key. Um, and we'll just keep this guy away from you, and we'll we'll go. I mean, they all know Mister Graves, right? They they all met him. It's not like this is a figment of well, your imagination. They didn't. Okay. We met the girl he was possessing. So I can see how this is going to make me look crazy <laughs> as fuck. But we set up a meeting at what was the name Black of the Tail. bar? Black Tail. Black Tail. At the Black Tail with Mr. Graves. And what showed up was a 16 year old girl named Alma who is being possessed by Mr. Graves. He had a conversation with all of us. So grab the rest of the putt group and they'll tell you. The rookery. No, the rookery is the location. It's also the cabal. <laughs> That's both. We had a meeting about this. And they will tell you that, that this conversation occurred. Okay. I pissed him off because that's what I'm good at, apparently. And he dropped possession of this girl and she freaked the fuck out and things happened. There, the world might be coming to an end because of it. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Point is, he wasn't there, but everybody else experienced the same events. Okay, well, I mean, that that sounds sleeper tactics. They have um, They have ways of doing that to sleepers surprisingly easily um so my sleepers aren't allowed down here um but yeah they uh, they're called a number of different things but yeah they can possess a sleeper with whom they have even a moderate connection to so yeah so i mean that that part makes sense so it sounds like mr graves is real don't deny that but Okay. Yeah. He tried to feed us to a vampire. I will have you know, and she was a very polite lady, and he's a dick. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so Shadell, like you know, kind of you know, brings Mammon over. A, not Shadell. Excuse me. He's that. Yes. Uh, he's a uh, brings uh, Mammon over to the like the couch and like sits down with him, and you know, uh, Ocean says, "I'll I'll call Atratus. We'll, we'll circle the wagons or something. Yeah. I'll 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 be back." And so Ocean walks out. Uh, we're going to put Mammon on pause for a bit uh, as uh, Atratus gets a call. Mm -hmm. um, that is basically, hey, Mammon is here. Something might be up. Um, stick together with the group. 
Um, where this Mr. Graves <laughs> literally <laughs> flung all over the yeah. city. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this Mr. Graves sounds like sounds like a seer, and it sounds like he's after Mammon and and maybe the rest of you. So everybody just stick close. Um, I don't think you all need to come rushing to the Athenaeum for for security, but just keep an eye out for anything weird. Thing. Okay. And I am immediately texting weird because. We haven't seen any sign of you since we got home last night. Right. Nope. It's just like, hey. Um, so Graves is doing something. Um, something's up with Mammon. We need to regroup. Where? Here. In our sanctum. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't know what no details beyond stay close. Um, so there's one that I'll be there in 30. And there's a follow on, maybe 45. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and then just to, that way we don't have another one of those sessions where people sit around and don't do anything. Um, uh, is Atranus going to try and do her summoning in the meantime? Uh, when Songbird gets back, yeah, I was going to work on. Mm -hmm. Which I think was uh, after the I'm cathedral. back at a plot yeah. around on time. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Cool. Um, so go ahead and roll your intelligence plus a cult. And for those for of you who are second. going, hang on, what's going on? We handled this in the break. You'll figure it out. Cool. So it reduces successes by one. So I think okay. we're at eight. So I'm at eight. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have... I'm like... That's my role for preparing the ritual space, right? That one was, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so I've already factored in everything all the else. pluses and minuses from everything else. Yep. I've uh, done my cleansing. I've set up my area. Mm -hmm. And you included your cleansing with your... your, cal mm -hmm. uh, your The number of successes you needed, you included the cleansing, like, minus... Yeah. Okay, just double-checking. Cool, so... I included the minus for the paradox, the plus for the cleansing, the minus for songbird helping. Right. How do we cleanse ourselves? Uh, it's a oh. yantra, but it's just you go yeah. through a. You it's know. just whatever cleansing ritual you do. Right. It can be like taking a bath, or some of them says like washing your face with sand. Hmm. Yep. Having a just double shot of Jack Daniels. Something ritualistic to cleanse negative energies off yourself. Yep. Center. Yep. So, um, well, yeah, use the teamwork action uh, stuff. I think there's something in SOS, but I'm, I just haven't bothered to dig it out. Uh, so, Chris, uh, if Songbird will roll Gnosis plus Kana, or, excuse me, Gnosis plus Matter. And one success. So, Ash, you can roll Gnosis plus uh, Matter plus one. Okay. And real quick, um, because I forgot to ask, did you... Uh, plan for additional successes or uh, for additional uh, roles. She have no. safe roles. Okay, that's fine. And uh, what was the time, uh, the extended duration uh, of safety? That second one down before they start taking damage. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to give them like thirty minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't plan on this being a long conversation. Right. Uh, what is your resolve plus composure? Our plus composure is four. Okay, so we have four free rolls. So first one. I'm just rolling Gnosis and Matter. Plus one, plus one. from Songbirds. Yep. Two. Okay, two. And then Chris and then Ash. Roll again. Yep. Yep. Plus one again. One. Okay. Okay, we're at four, four out of eight. three rolls. And yeah. that's three of your free rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm good at helping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I need, that's all my free rolls, right? Four. Mm -hmm. And you're at five, yep. So you need three mm -hmm. more. Okay, well, we're going to keep going. Okay. Six. Okay. Again. Mm 
Oof. Eight. Cool. <sighs> Audience, you saw how close that came. <laughs> How close was oh, it? Oh, you'll have to watch on the video. Um, so, uh, if you've got it scrolled down to the right area, yep. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta go check the other day. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and you were summoning an, an uh, Apiron of yeah, rank one matter and prime. Ah, yes. Um, or at least we're trying to get it to prime. You don't have, yeah. so mm -hmm. you can't target. Um, and what was the the kind of like the question the you know the thing that you were putting out there of why you know why you why you're entreating a supernal entity to meet you for? Uh, why have you been watching me? Gotcha. Hmm. Um, so, um, you know, we have the the ritual circle, um, you know, out and prepared. Both of you guys kind of working lockstep to, you know, some of this thing and um, the just in the middle of the circle is this form of like roiling stormy metal, um, you know, not some like blobby, um, you know, smooth, but like very raucous storm you know, kind of thing going. And there's like the words that come out of its mouth do not seem to just they're in the room. It doesn't seem to come out from this thing. Um, and it basically, you know, kind of looks down. And as it's moving, you watch as the metal moves from like a shining kind of mercury to like a duller iron and it starts to transition into like gold and it's moving through a bunch of these, you know, different metals. Um, I think both of you would probably recognize, oh, these are all like the perfected metals uh, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And uh, it kind of looks down and um, it says, why do we, you know, you know, what what answers, you know, show me dedication to your craft. Um. I'm going to pull out the dagger that I've been working on. Kinda. It's not finished, but it's most of the way there. I've been spending days on this. I split my soul for this. Kind of looks down and kind of runs a finger along it. And there's just like this little, you know, trail of, you know, almost like electricity sparking between the finger and the, the metal. It looks down and kind of looks about split your soul. Hmm. It is rather homey here. <laughs> okay. Not the songbird. <laughs> okay. The anti songbird area. Um, and so it nods. This is okay. Very well. You want to know why we're watching you? Yes. Like a broken thing walking and tottering like a real person but you're broken little marionette with strings cut you're not all right do you know why i don't have any skill in death can't see what's wrong with your soul but something is out of alignment. The matrix of yourself and your soul, your skills, your gnosis, your arcana, it's all disjointed. A piece of you is missing or it's too much of you. It kind of looks misshapen. You are a broken thing. Not ugly. Just, it needs more time in the forge. And like, the there, there's no expression, no face to it. It's just this very, like, flat, you know, thing. But you can see very almost, you know, bird-like, a lot, lot of head motion as it's, mm -hmm. you know, taking this time. Well, since, Inspecting right, me. since you're going to yeah. bring yourself right up in, it's looking and trying to, yeah, and it's, you know, yeah. Broken little thing, marionette without strings. 
Do you know how I can fix it? That, that I don't know. But it's wrong on the inside. Okay. Your path, you have two paths. Or you should only have one. All right. Well, we'll have to go inside. Oh, are we doing that now? Can I come? <laughs> Is that safe? Hmm. For who? Well, <laughs> kind of looks looks from you and then to Songbird. Who Songbird? I'm sure you have been just like sitting quietly, like no attention, please. Or I didn't hear any of that. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah, Songbird. You know how is Songbird handling this? You know thing showing up. Uh. Well, I've still got the spooked condition. <laughs> <laughs> um. So out of character, if. If we are going into your soul, I will run the fuck away and get lost for a little bit. Maybe that could be fun. Yeah. Um. Sure. I. Is it. Is it safe to take the. Epiron into my soul? Well, and, and yeah. So if if you suggest that yes, you know we'll go in. Uh, it says good. I need a conduit and kind of looks and that's where you know it's looking at songbird and looking at you hmm. you don't have the right tools to help me in well once you're in summon me again we would have to succeed again right mm -hmm. uh what's your name so we can know we're summoning you uh, it kind of, you know, shrugs as names are very permanent. Um, what do you want to call me? No, I don't know. I didn't. And looks over at Songbird. You, truth you speaker, have a suggestion? give me a name. Yeah. Hmm. I'm on the spot. <laughs> um, and I, I will give you guys one of those those little hints. Like you've seen supernal beings named a range of things. Yeah. Very simple names to intersection and yeah. <laughs> We're not naming him Tim. Nope. So I'll come up with a better uh, idea. <laughs> uh, that group effort here. <laughs> Richard. So we can say that was a dick. How about the perfection flame? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I like that one. Nothing flamey about it, though. It's very, very solid. I was thinking like Hephaestus. So, it's a pretty good forge master. Yeah. yeah that's like it's a pretty pretty uh complimentary name for uh Epiron. Rank one, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> but is it, do you speak up? I like uh, it. Yeah, we'll call him that. Okay. Creator, Forge Master, that works. Festus. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure something else is already called that, but that's what I'm calling you. So, sure. Oh yeah, there's others, but this one is you. I'll watch for you. Yeah. Summon me into your okay. soul. And and we'll, we'll walk arm in arm and see where you're broken, little one. All right. <laughs> and uh, okay. you... and do we want to cut to weird for the moment? Yeah, I was going to say, do you guys, you know, like, you know, you know, scratch out the thing and let it just fade away. Uh, yeah, I think we're done for the moment okay. here. Yeah, we'll call you later. Yeah. So weird. Uh, where are you as you've been wandering? D did you end up any specific place or? 
Um, Keep in mind, uh, this took us hours to do, so... Yeah, what yeah you, you should be home by so, now. Oh, yeah, that's true. I would hear stuff going on behind uh, closed doors, so by this time, I'm, like, face first, mouth sort of open on the couch, arm on the floor, <laughs> one leg up on the back. It's like, so... Dead so asleep. Okay. Uh, but had, Weird had just been wandering, basically? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, we, we cut... Didn't didn't find any answers. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, we cut back to uh, Mammon, who um, and of course this took uh, how many? Is it an hour per roll? Mm-hmm. Had that's what you said. Six. Before, yeah. Yep. Yeah, six, six hours. hours. Yeah. Two, three, four. Five, so it's like eight o'clock yeah. at night. Yeah. So um, so we're backtracking in time here we'll go get dinner and then come back to this uh so yeah he's a um you know basically is chatting with mammon and literally has like a notebook out and is trying to basically get as much information about the encounter with mr graves as mammon is willing to give um but like oceans had left to make that call and doesn't come back and so, like, and it's probably about half an hour, maybe an hour of he's uh, just going through everything. And he starts to, like, loop back onto the same questions, stuff that Mammon has already answered. But um, otherwise, yeah. Um, I, uh, after, like, what, the second or third time he's looped back to the same mm-hmm. questions... Uh, I'm going to mention it pointing at the door. Is she is she coming back? Because I feel like you're stalling me by repeating questions I've already answered. I Listen, you've been very polite and I appreciate that. And I don't want to be rude, but I feel like I'm losing my fucking shit right now because I'm just now finding out that maybe my memory was altered. Maybe it wasn't altered. Maybe Beck is dead. Maybe she's not dead. Maybe I killed her. Maybe she's having fucking, I don't know, fucking (laughs) waffles somewhere. I need some fucking answers. And if you don't have them, that's fine. That's not your fault. I will go find them myself, but I can't. I can't just sit here and answer questions and act like everything is fine and nothing is falling apart around me. And yeah, let's um, yeah, let, 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 let's get out of this office. Um, and so, you know, he's uh, kind of gets up and opens the door. I'm, I'm sure Oceans is, you know, calling up any Mastigos in, in the Mysterium, in the caucus. We'll, we'll, we'll get some folks over. Um, let's you know, do, do you want to go get some to eat? Like we can, we can walk down the street. I'm sure we can find something. Uh, yeah, Mammon kind of <sighs> lets out a sigh and is like, "Yeah, food would be great. Actually, I think I'm getting a little hangry." Yeah, it's okay. Well, what is it? Uh, Snickers? Yeah, we'll 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 feed you. you you'll feel a little better. And so he's a uh, kind of walks with you to the elevator. And you guys ride it up, head out to the. Uh, uh, sidewalk outside and just start you know walking and you know at this point it's you know probably two three yeah so you guys have been in there for a bit definitely miss lunch yeah but definitely uh so yeah he's just he's walking with you kind of chit-chatting you know, and and has now gear you know switch gears to talking about other stuff. You know, where do you want to go eat? Um, How do you feel? I don't know. I, I'm I've got a hankering for a turkey club. I haven't had a good one in a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, we're we're in New York City. We can find a deli. All right. Um, so yeah, so it's walking with you, trying to find a you know find a you know turkey club spot, and you mentioned it's like. You know, don't 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 stress about oceans. I'm she's probably just spreading the word, trying to do that curator thing. She's you know running the store, so well we'll we'll get to the bottom of this. You know, uh, I, we we all hate unanswered questions, so spread the word around. I don't know. She might go straight to the hierarchy, and we'll spread this across the concilium. Uh, if nothing else, everybody needs to know that there's some seer trying to poach trying to mess with 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 the cabal yeah so let's let, let's get that spread out 
Uh, you guys find, you know, some little mom and pop, you know, deli. Why should hang out? Down in the financial district. So, oh yeah, you can still probably find a mom and pop place somewhere around there. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless, walk, talk, possibly grab, you know, Subway, something. He's it takes you, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, my treat. Uh, <laughs> thanks, yeah. Uh, and, you know, sits you down, you know, the you know, little booth across from you and, you know, get some to eat himself and it's like, yeah, no, this is okay, man. Don't worry about it. I just, um, I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm going to do if, uh, like it keeps, it keeps hitting me, you know, like I, I have these very vivid memories of, that that day um somebody somebody changed something right and going back to your your previous theory of you know well, what 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 if what if what they showed me was true right that they showed me the real version of of the events um i I don't know. I don't know what the point of anything is. Well, what's what's the point? Like my entire life was based around her. Everything we did was together. My entire identity as a person revolved around my relationship with her. And and yeah, OK, so I left and I came to New York without her. Right. But it was always with the intention of figuring something out and either going back there or bringing her here. That was always the intent. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where to go if if she is gone. I don't know what's left. Would why did you leave Seattle? Or why did Washington? I guess is the term he. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, I, I left? I left because uh, you know we the the bank robbery had gone south. Um. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd kind of been on the radar a little bit before then um, for some other stuff, you know, scams and whatnot. OK. Um, and uh, we um, I don't know. I was afraid of, of the heat landing on our doorstep. Say um, I was I was concerned about the, you know, the heat landing on our doorstep, so to speak. So I uh, I felt it was best to get out of there. Give it some time. You know, obviously, when you go on the run, you don't want to stay close by where it happened because that's where they look. Sure, sure. Um, but. And it's easy to get lost in New York. Uh, sure. It, so that was the idea. So you, you came. But why did you wait so long to contact her? Well, so, you know, when I first came here, I didn't really understand the extent of what we do. Sure. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you were new. And so it was it was all new. I didn't – I don't know, man. I, the only thing I had to go based on was, was books and movies, right? So the last thing I wanted was to invite her over here and then one night I have a bad dream and I light the fucking bedroom on fire. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to give it some time. To, to get a grasp on all this, to figure out what's going on. What are the, the the norms, the taboos? I mean, when I first came here, I didn't even know that these societies existed. You know, I, when I first came over here, I didn't even know there were other people like me. Um, and so I, I don't know, it seemed, it, it just seemed right to give it time. So, uh, figure stuff out. And then, you know, I started getting that taken care of, but I had no money. And what is the good in what's the use in running from one bad situation with the law on my heels it, to only to come here and create the same problem? So I was like, well, I'll I'll go legit and I'll use my skills and, and start a business. So I did. And then it was like, well, I don't want to bring her over here and struggle starting this business. So then it became, let me get this business off the ground. And then I finally got to the point where all of that occurred, at least to a satisfactory level. And 
then it was like, all right, let me let me bring her over here. And yeah. So you left Washington and left the only person that you had a connection to behind. Do you think you would have done that? Like, th- think think about yourself, and because because I, I I don't know me, I don't know you, Naaman, but she's the only person you care about. She's the only person you have a connection to. This event happens. There's heat on you, and you left her there, where you're a known associate of hers, and and you left her there. She didn't. You didn't. Did you try and tell her where you went? You just. You just left. I just left. I didn't tell her anything. And honestly, no, that that doesn't that doesn't sound like me. I I mean, we've been we've been through some pretty some pretty bad shit. And and I mean, even 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 if all of this, you know, with with with, you know, what we are, um, I part of me still believes I would have brought her with me. Uh, I mean, so, so you would have brought her with you, except that maybe she couldn't come with you. Okay. But why don't I remember that? I mean, maybe there, there's something else we don't know. Um, I mean, there, there's some, some seriously, there's a lot going on in that one memory of yours now. Like it's been altered a couple different ways. You and the the one person in the world that potentially you would have taken with you to New York is not here. And and the the one person who would have possibly kept you in Seattle, even if you were trying to lay low, you know, is gone. Like it sounds like to move Mammon, the best lever is is Beck. If Beck is gone, you have no reason to stay. You fled to New York. And why'd you pick New York? Why not LA? Why not Orlando, Miami? Well, I don't um Did you just pick it? I wouldn't go to Orlando or Miami. Uh, that's where you go to die. It's a fact. <laughs> Jacksonville, shout out. You know who you are. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Like New York is, it's a like I said, it's a big place. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to be overlooked, which in my line of work is extremely valuable. Sure. Uh, the people are all fucking shit. I mean, um, that's everywhere you go. But I mean, like you could have gone to L.A. Would have been a shorter flight. Why didn't you go to LA? Did you did you flip a coin? I don't like the weather. I don't like the hot, the heat. It's got to be. Okay. I need a winter. Damn it. Okay. Sure. But no, I I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I mean, I don't know. I just uh, you know how sometimes you go to make a decision and it just feels right, and you don't have a good logical reason other than just. It feels right. And so you do it. That's why I chose New York. Uh, it just it just felt right. So you have no reason. You, just a feeling and a pull and a tug and a push. Just a little suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, I. It sounds like somebody has been pulling strings on you. So they've been pulling strings on me before I was even worth pulling the strings on. Before you awakened. Looks yeah. Like... Why? And why would they even know to target me that far in advance? Well, yeah, how's this say? I can't this seeing far into the future, seeing what need what's needed. Exarchs, they cheat. Like they, they, they sit, I mean, they, they make the comments about how they're in heaven. They're in the supernal realm. They can just send down dreams and let people know. And seer, it, it's why the seers tend to be ahead of us in a lot of this stuff. 
All it takes is an exarch sending out Ochema and other agents and pushing things in the right spots and the dominoes start to fall and then all of a sudden Mammon is in New York being talked to a seer by by the name of Mr. Graves. I mean, I would say it's far-fetched, except we are who we are and we make the impossible happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I would... Uh, I would stick in the stick in the Athenaeum. We'll, we'll keep you wrapped up, night, nice and tight, and actually, um, while I'm thinking about it, and very quickly um, cast ward over you. Oh hell yes! Um, yeah, it does. And just very quickly, it's like if if nothing else, no scrying on you, and. You know, that old, you know, no, no scrying, no spying. Should have thought of it earlier. But if if they're really... Our, our, my first concern was they were after the Athenaeum. They wanted to see how to get in. But you said they weren't following you. And Not that I saw. Right. And there's no connection from you to Mr. Graves. So he's not spying on that. At least not that we can tell. But, I mean, they have other things... And like all of a sudden, like that comment of other things, and he kind of sits back and goes, "What the fucking such a," <laughs> and just like a you know, very like in that the Irish brogue comes out as he just lets loose a string of curses, and just kind of sits back, opens his eyes uh, like a little bit wider, and he goes, "Well, shit." And kind of motions for you to like, it's like, just open your eyes a little wider. Okay. Yeah. So activate mage sight. Um, yeah. And uh, they're floating. Sorry, somebody's invading my room. Uh, <laughs> um, the floating over the table, just like very, like just hanging um, as if like, well, actually, literally born on six wings of smoke is this kind of bent forward, looks like a mummified figure, like wrapped up and stuff like that. One large, massive, bulbous eye at, at its head and other eyes kind of just spotted all over it. And it's just kind of ha hanging there in, in twilight, which... For Mammon has probably never seen anything in Twilight before. The only thing that mind mages can see is Goetia, which so they're fairly rare. But here's this thing floating, visible to Mammon now, and it's just kind of its head is darting, and like I said, it is completely mummified up. But you can hear kind of through you know muffled is you know words and stuff describing the place that you're sitting in describing the table, you know, Turkey club, like describing everything that's going on in the scene, not, you know, and then, you know, the big eye kind of swings back and forth, um, from you to he's and back. And it's just floating there watching. And, uh, he's kind of looks up and says, they're watching and they cheat. That is a Gregory, and we need to leave. And that is where we're going to end the episode. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, get rid of those. You'll have to find out. <laughs> uh, so, hey guys, uh, thanks for sticking through uh, this episode as we proceed. Well, excuse me, not we. I proceed to torture Mammon. Um, <laughs> And uh, everybody gets to watch. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is this is where we get into mages, mage on mage action. Um, yeah, there there's some messed up stuff. If any of you were thinking, "Wow, where's the horror in mage?" Welcome to it. We're we're getting into it. Uh, no privacy, things spying on you, messed up memories. Yeah. This is it. Uh, so, yeah, we will catch you guys next week. 
And I think if my math is correct, the week after we sh well, yeah, that should be August, right? Yeah, so start beginning of August is when we're going to start streaming. So keep an eye out for that. There will be stuff on like Patreon and Discord and stuff like that. So See, next week is the second. Next week is is that when we start? I'm not 100. percent I've been told beginning of August. So okay. the ninth is when I'm not here. Uh -huh. so. Okay. So we shall see. Uh, yeah. Uh, either way, I mean, even if Tritus isn't here, we've done stuff without people before. We've had yeah. half episodes without me even here. Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks guys for hanging out, and we will see you on the next episode. Stay so creepy. Stay lucky. Stay lucky. <laughs> creepy. I like that one. Bye guys. And there we are. The Cabal starting to come together a little bit. We have Mammon freaking out. We have Atratus finding out that something is wrong with her and an invitation by a supernal being to summon her into her own soul. Uh, Songbird sounds like he's coming along um, and uh, Weird is passed out on the couch. And yeah, so after uh, after meeting with Mr. Johnson, Mr. Graves, the spider, um, the Cabal is definitely taking a bit of a hit in terms of... Uh, uh, where they are emotionally. So uh, this will be kind of interesting. I'm looking forward to where we go from here. Um, let us know down in the comments. Hop in Discord and chat with us. I would love to hear your guys' opinions. Uh, the rest of the Cabal sees a lot of the comments and uh, all the chat in Discord. Uh, so they like seeing that. They will definitely get into discussions. And that's totally cool. So come join us for that. As I mentioned on the last episode, uh, we will be live streaming as of August 9th at uh, 7 Eastern Daylight, 6 CST. That's my local time. Check your time calculations to figure out exactly when. But PM that night, we will be playing uh, on the Onyx Path uh, Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the Onyx Path. Come by, hang out. I would love to see all of you guys there and and have a good show and you won't have split out episodes you will see the entire three hours unedited with raw audio and uh gaffs and downtime and stuff like that but it will be us it, it'll be you're sitting and watching us play the game um It'll be exactly what we have been doing for the past, I don't know how many weeks, since March. Uh, but hey, you will get to participate and watch with us. Um, so that'll be cool. Uh, and of course, if you guys are interested in supporting us, uh, you can definitely do that by liking, subscribing, sharing, tell your friends, come watch these dumb idiots play mage. It's ridiculous. Uh, anything like that is great. And then, of course, if you want, you can come by Patreon, patreon.com slash occultistanonymous, and support us monetarily, too, if you have the means to do so. Uh, so uh, until next time, guys, we'll see you.